So um, I'll call the December 10th Airport Advisory Board meeting to order. It is very nice to see everybody, even if it's over Zoom and not back in person. Um, Michelle, would you mind calling the roll, please? Absolutely. Uh, Steve Bliss. Here. Harrison Earl. Here. Kent Jacobson. Here. Melinda Jordan. Here. Russell Robeson. Here. Mick White. Orion Wiseman. Council Member Peck. Here. You have a quorum. Fantastic. Thank you. Whoever has the grandfather clock, I love it. <laughs> um, first item on the agenda is our public invited to be heard, uh, which we'll open up. Each person who's wishing to speak, be unmuted one at a time. Uh, please state name and address for the record, three minutes for comments, and remember to be respectful, address the comments to the board and not to any individual. Um, Chair, we don't actually have any uh, public with us in this uh, setting right. tonight. He wasn't, didn't join. Okay, well, we'll move on and they'll be the second invited if they do join. Um, so the first agenda item then is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Does anybody um, have any comments on that or um, entertain a motion to approve if not? Uh, I make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second the motion. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the February 13th regular meeting say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, so then we'll move along to a financial update. Mr. Slater, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so the year-to-date revenue total received at the end of November um, is $442,719.11. Uh, expended is $296,311.81 with $820 encumbered. Um, I believe that encumbrance is towards a uh, contract that we just haven't finalized and closed out yet. Um, that leaves us a, a difference of $145,587.30 to the good. Um, with that, I will say that uh, COVID hit pretty hard on uh, fuel flowage, and of course, tech, uh, refund as well. Um, the only other thing of note um, is uh, the, the city has recently entered in some new contracts with uh, other cell phone towers. And I'm not sure if maybe a couple of our checks might have got deposited into the wrong place so under the cell phone tower, why it looks low. I am checking into that with the county and uh, finance and we'll find out what's going on and, and why that wasn't deposited into that account. But uh, by the end of the year, we should be right at that, that 90 something thousand dollar number. Um, other than that, if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer those. You answered my cell phone tower question right off yeah, the Yeah, that's the same question I had. Do any other board members have any other questions on the financial update? Uh, David, on the contract service, what, what contract is it you expect to sign between now and the end of the year that'll bring that balance uh, closer to Well, it, it, it's a contract that we're already in, I believe, and I, I would have to look it up real quick. I don't recall if it's uh, the um, grass cutting that we're just closing out or the snow removal that we're just had some, some extra in, encumbered, but uh, I can look that up real quick um, before we move on to the next item, if, if you want. Um, David, it may be Kramer. Yeah, that's the grass cutting contract. 
And that's the, um, that one's just done this last week. So that should so, be. So for the next month's uh, report, that will, should be closed out at 120. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Yep. Um, just about there. Uh, David, uh, I'd like to ask a question, Steve Bliss. Yes, sir. Is the drainage ditch project complete? Um, physically, yes. Uh, financially, no. Um, they just finished that, and I, I was going to cover that in the under the new business, um, which was one of the first items. If you want to wait till then, or I can answer it now. No, I'll wait. Sure. Thank you. David, uh, when we left off in February, we were talking a lot about snow removal and uh, Mile High not being interested in continuing. Have you had any trouble uh, filling in their contract? It looks like the rates might have gone up uh, based on the budget from last year. Uh, well, the the budget that, that we started with this year is the same. Um, that hasn't changed. Um, we did just recently execute a new contract uh, in the past couple of weeks. And we are just, we just finished up training with them and they are out actually getting ready um, and have mobilized equipment and brought it in. So um, we do have someone under contract, Mountain West, um, and they've gone through training with me on the airfield. And uh, the rates is, is an hourly rate, but it appears that even though it's a little bit higher than the hourly rate that we were previously charged, um, it looks like they're able to finish it in less time. So it looks like it's going to probably average out a little bit. Okay, thanks. Sure. Any other questions from any board members on the financial update? David, I know we'd, we'd left off last time in February to talk about CIP update, and I, I am curious about that, but I'm going to hold for the CARES Act section some questions there. So I know okay. that will come. Um, so then, unless there's other questions, move on to the airport needs recommendations to council. Um, and I have two items I just wanted to follow up on. Um, in February, we were speaking about the CPI adjustment in the leases that needed to be addressed. That right potentially require lease amendments. Is that something that, that will require the lease amendments and therefore will we need to recommend, you know, council approves those amendments? No, so um, how we're going to address that, we, we it, the way the language is written, it allows for if that particular CPI uh, index is no longer available, then it's the next one that covers this region. Okay. Um, and it basically just changed names, um, not so much the area. So um, on any new lease, leases going forward, we have the new CPI index named in the new leases. Um, and there's no need to amend previous or, or current leases um, just to adjust that because the, the law allows for if that one ever goes away, just go to the next the, the, the next regional um, CPI okay. that is there, which is what we've done. Easy. Um, and then the other question I had before I turn it to anybody else is the 30 year leases um, with the ballot measure now allowing them, you know, do, do we need to at this point make a recommendation on future lease structure? Um, or is that something that will come out of you know, an RFP for a next Finger development, or how should we be thinking about that when we want to? Actually, that uh, once it once it was certified, um, election results and went through all the constitutional requirements, which I think they wrapped up at the end of November. And Michelle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it it was the latter part of November that they uh, certified the election results. And so once they went through that process, it, they're immediately eligible. Um, going forward. Now, the ones that were already in process um, through the end of this year, if they want to go back and do a lease amendment on that new lease to go to 30 years, then we would take those before council just as a normal lease amendment. 
So, I, I mean, I don't know that there's really a recommendation that needs to go to council on that because the, the ballot measure passed and has been certified. And so they are now eligible for 30 years. I think it was more you know, a question on, given that that's a kind of business change and, you know, basically the question, is that right for the airport? Yes or no. And making sure that council is aware of the opinions of the board as a matter of you know, policy or precedent, really not necessarily the mechanics of yes, you can at this point, if that would be something that's right. Uh, uh, if, if the board wishes to write a letter in support of that, then by all means, absolutely. I think that that would be in order. Um, I think that it is advantageous for the airport because, you know, it's more in line with the times of what lease term people are looking for when they're constructing new hangars. Um, they'd much rather have a 30 year lease than a 20 year lease. So I think it's advantageous for the airport to, to use the 30 year lease. Um, which is one of the things that we went through the city manager's office and then through him to, to the council members um, as to why that, that it's helpful for the airport. So the, the council is aware of that. Um, I don't want to speak for them. I guess maybe John can, can answer that better than I can as far as uh, their take on it. But it's something that failed the last time and council opted to put it back on the ballot for this time. Uh, so that would seem to indicate that that's something that they're in favor of. You want me to speak to that now or wait? Sure, no, go ahead. Please. Okay. You're correct, David, that um, we did okay that and thought it was a good, a good thing. But it's my understanding that each lease is at the discretion of council whether they want it to be up to 30 years or not. So it's not like a blanket uh, proposal that all leases from this point on will be 30 years. It depends upon each individual. But I, you know, I think council did support that uh, the 30 year lease for hangers. If, if I'm understanding what you're talking about correctly. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Bliss, I think you were wanting to chime in there. Oops. Did anyone else have comment on that or um, a different recommendation to council? Does anyone think we need to, you know, address any support to council at this point or wait for an individual lease before we bring that up? I would sounds think- mean like, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. It sounds to me like uh, they're in favor of it if they brought it back onto the ballot on their own and David agrees it's good for the airport. I think most uh, lessees are gonna be interested in it. So mm -hmm. sounds like everybody involved is already interested in it without much input from us. It seems like maybe um, if somebody was applying and struggling to get the full 30 years that wanted it, that they might seek support from us um, at that point uh, to encourage the city to honor, to extend them the 30 year lease. I don't know if we would know about that. Somebody would have to reach out to us, but that would seem reasonable to be able to get behind an individual case, knowing that it's not a blanket clause. Yeah, I would, I would typically the leases don't, each lease that goes to the council doesn't go before the board, just, just the master lease. Mm -hmm. And we can begin reviewing that next year uh, and make any updates or changes that are necessary. Um, we can do that as agenda item um, next year, uh, as well as schedule or racing charges. Um, but they wouldn't go before the board. So if there's somebody that thinks that it might need some assist, then I would say that that person might want to reach out to the, the board. So Harris and David, sorry to interrupt. We have somebody that is on an iPhone. Um, not sure if it's a board member. So we were going to admit them just to see. Go so ahead. it'll take just a second here. For our iPhone user, we just made you a co-host, so if you could please share your camera.
And I just asked you to unmute if you could identify yourself. Hi, this is Mick. Thank you. Hey, Mick. Glad you could join us. Hi. Hey, uh, does anyone else have anything on the airport needs recommendation to council item? Well, let's move on to new business. Uh, there, we can see you, Mick. Nice to see you. Um, Mr. Snyder, runway safety area project update. You're muted, David. Thank you. I thought I clicked on it, but I guess I didn't. Um, earlier, I was asked about uh, the runway safety area, if it was completed. Uh, physically, yes. Uh, we just did final completion. Um, basically, that project there, the Peck Ditch Company had a had an irrigation ditch that ran uh, partially through the runway safety area on the west end of the runway. Um, we received grant funding from the FAA, and uh, it was I've got the numbers right here. There's a grant um, that will finalize out at five hundred and forty three thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars. Um, about 143 to 144,000 of that is engineering and design cost. Um, and then the rest of it is, is the construction cost. Um, we basically tied into the ditch closer to the fence line on the, on the west end and paralleled the fence line around the outside of the, the vehicle service road or perimeter road and then came up and tied it back into the original ditch on that end, just outside of our fence line. Um, and then we angled the fence over so that the farmer would still have access to, to the area outside of the ditch and put a culvert in on the backside as well. So there's two, two different access points on, on the ditch. Um, it's actually a much better ditch. Um, and then we did the grading in the runway safety area, uh, which extends out 300 feet past the runway and graded and sloped it so that it would drain properly uh, within the runway safety area. Um, we are just waiting on an invoice from the contractor, uh, which will be the full amount minus, I believe it's 5% retainage. Um, and then we'll pay the retainage um, once everything else is, uh, any punch list item is finalized, but they are for the most part offsite and it is complete. Any questions about that project? Yes, David, is, is that project, was that in preparation to lengthen the runway or was that totally separate? That was actually totally separate. It, it was a safety area project um, because the ditch impeded in the runway safety area. Does it help in the event we eventually get funding to extend the runway? Yes, significantly. Thank you. Any other questions from the board on the runway safety area project? And David, do you wanna move on to a CARES Act grant? Sure, um, so basically what the CARES Act grant did is provide $69,000. Um, I'm not exactly sure the formula that the FAA uses um, to determine how much each airport gets, but they made the determination that we were able and eligible to get $69,000. And that goes towards helping us out with uh, the operations and maintenance cost of the airport due to the fact that we lost business, especially during the, the stay at home and, and safer at home orders um, that were originally put out there. And the operations counts kind of uh, during that time frame, first part of the year, um, particularly the, you know, March through May, June timeframe, um, there were significant reductions. And, you know, there were some days that no aircraft flew. Um, of course, that, that also hurt our fuel flowage uh, and fuel refund. Um, 
the number of operations, uh, how much we got off of the, the ramp fee, which is a minimal amount anyway, but it did take its toll on that as well. Um, and then, you know, some of the maintenance and, and things that we did at the airport um, was eligible for that as well. So we were able to, I guess for a lack of a better word, capitalize on, on using that grant up. And uh, I have the reimbursement request into the FAA and we should be getting paid before the end of the month, I hope. <laughs> um, so we were able to, to, to re get, we're able to get refunded the 69,000 that the CARES grant allowed us to, to accept. That's, that's my update on that. Any questions from the board? David, my question is on um, CARES Act as related to um, matching dollars. Um, that they, you know, were able to provide more federal funding for AIP projects than in the past and not require the matching. Can you, you just talk really quickly about that impact? Sure, yeah, and I probably should have brought that up um, with the runway safety area project as well. Um, so typically the FAA funding is 90% and then 5% is picked up by the state aviation uh, at CDOT and then 5% by the airport fund. Um, with the runway safety area project, they did use some of the CARES Act dollars to pick up that extra 10%, both from the state and from us locally. So they paid 100% on the safety area project as well. So we did not have to match that grant, um, which is really good. Um, it also helped the state aviation out because they are taking a hit because all airports are having issues with fuel flowage which means that there's less going into the state fund, uh, state aviation trust fund as well. Um, so that did help with the safety area project as well. Great, thank you. That's helpful context. Um, I think when, at least for me, when we get into next year, you know, January potentially to relook at the CIP and you know see that impact because that certainly that savings is nice as we look at some of those future projects and you know whether 2021 or future years that we right. have an extra to play with now. Yeah, I might as well ask since we're talking about it, David. In your mind, uh, it looks like we're currently 145,000 into the enterprise fund uh, as of November 30th. Are we on track for the CIP for the next couple of years? Uh, in your opinion? Um. Yes, and I would like to put the CIP discussion on our next agenda so that we can go over that. Um, we had to wrap that up um, and have it entered by, I guess it was about a month ago was the deadline that we put that in. So um, they're not looking at CARES Act funding going forward on that, uh, that they told us about anyway. Um, but I believe we are on track for how we're looking to, to stay positive, uh, meaning uh, revenue versus expended. Um, we should still be in the black and, and on track for, for what we anticipate on that. And of course, I can also um, bring up what, what we look like on our, our fund balance at the end of the year um, on our next meeting as well. So I'll, I'll make sure the CIP and the uh, airport fund balance is, is on the next agenda. All right, sounds good, thank you. Sure. David, one, one piece of that, if I can just request, what, when you look at that, can you also include the either anticipated or what you're gonna request for AIP funding? Sure. Uh, yeah, and I can I can run over that briefly if you if you like. I'm okay waiting for January and seeing it in the broader context. Okay. I asked specifically. So one thing I'm tracking for work outside of this is just aviation trust fund health right now. Okay. And you know, but if there is no relief on that, a potential recommendation to council to recommend to our 
federal elected officials, you know, take action on that because there there's certainly risk in that funding source going forward right now. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions on CARES Act funding? And last and not least, uh, Southside Utility Project. Okay, so um, we felt like there was a really super tight budget. And so we were able to get the city engineer, the engineering department to partner with us to, to handle the design for the utility, uh, the water and sewer utilities that we're gonna be doing on the south side. Um, and so I got that information to them uh, end of 2019, very beginning of 2020 at the latest. I don't remember if it was uh, December or January, but um, they worked on it. And then the engineer that was working on it retired mid-year. And the way it was laid out was more for an on-call contractor to perform. And there were some hesitations in the engineering department to do it that way after all. And so the new engineer that they brought on, um, he didn't have to completely start from scratch, but he had, he definitely had to make some adjustments to it. And so we're hoping to advertise um, at the beginning of next year and be ready to begin construction and have it done by spring of next year. Um, hopefully the March timeframe. Um, and we had received a state grant from CDOT for 400,000. Uh, and we were matching that with airport fund money in the amount of $323,222. So about $724,000, uh, 723,000 and change um, for the total project. Uh, so it looks like we will have that in place by spring of uh, 2021. So there were some delays that unanticipated delays that a uh, little disappointing for me, but um, hopefully by the time we have development ready to get going over there, we'll have that in. David, where is that going to be located? Is that going to be inside the uh, airport proper or on the other side of the road on the south side? No, it's going to be just inside the airport fence. It'll start down by Rogers Road where there's a, a manhole um, about 15 feet outside the fence on the east end. And then it'll run west along inside the airport property mm -hmm. and go just around the outside of the, the existing hangars on the south side and run just past them. Um, and then cross underneath the access road coming in from the cul-de-sac. And then there will be one main pipe that makes a right-hand turn and goes along that access road headed north. And then it will also continue down uh, to the west even more and then come in almost behind the Quonset hut, behind mile, where Mile High is located so that both sides of that new taxi lane will be serviced. And then the water loop will start on the far southwest corner of that uh, southwest hangar over there. There's a, a hydrant and a hydrant valve there. It will loop out and follow the sewer line back up behind the Kwanzaa hut and then turn and go back towards the hangars, um, towards the east, towards those hangars and tie into a water main over there. So we will have two hydrants installed um, for new development as well for fire protection, um, along with that water loop to allow for them to tie into the water as well as the sewer. Oh, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? All right then. Um, next item, public, final public invited to be heard. Michelle, Heather, has anyone joined in yet? We have not had anybody join us. All right. So we'll move on then to board, council, and staff comments. Does anyone on the board have any comments they'd like to make? Uh, anything? Can we make a comment about anything? I mean, preferably related to the airport and, you know, our advice. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, I don't know if this is up. 
I, I got a call from a, from one of the pilots and that South side road, um, it comes to a, a, uh, a dead end and then the fence has a gate. The gate opens when the skydiving operation is going. And so those cars can go in and out. But during that construction on, um, on this drainage, there were some trucks. They didn't want to open that gate to leave the airport. So they broke through that fence that aligns that taxiway. And they came across some hangars and they deposited on, from their tires, dirt, rock, and all that stuff. And one of the guys told me he couldn't get his airplane out and he was afraid to start his airplane. So I'm wondering if we, uh, if David could uh, mention to those guys not to do that, go out of the airport at that gate and get out of your truck and open up the gate if you're gonna leave the airport and don't open up a, a fence that, you know, it's, a, it's like a barbed wire fence and, um, and then drive through the taxiways. So just a little clarification on that. Um, I got an email from that tenant and that evening I went and talked with the contractor. I talked to actually two contractors to make sure that I had the correct one and got in touch with, with the contractor that was working on the, the ditch for the RSA. And they had, there was, there is a gap between that bar bar fence and the main gate that they did cut through and they, they weren't just cutting through because they couldn't get out the gate because they had their own lock on there. They had gone over to pick up a hydrant meter and some barricades right there on the edge. Huh. And I did address that with them and let them know that's not the thing to do. And then they came and sprayed it off and rinsed it down and then swept it. And I went in behind them with the FOD boss and picked up any remaining little gravel pieces and everything on the same day that I received notification that it was an issue. We took up care of it that same day. So that's, that's the back end of that story. Okay. Well, that's all I, that's the only comment I had. Thank, Thank you, David. You. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anybody else on the board? This might be kind of a long range thing, but um, I became an airplane owner this year and I've been flying out a long month more than usual uh, back when I rented. And so I've been thinking about Longmont compared to uh, Fort Collins or Northern Colorado, uh, Northern Colorado regional, if you insist. Um, the operations numbers on AirNav are not that different. And Fort Collins obviously has a remote tower. I'm wondering uh, you guys that fly out of Longmont in the next five or 10 years, can you see a remote tower being a thing at Longmont? And uh, is that something we should think about in the future? Now, for just as somebody who flies out of there, all the guys that I talk to say they don't want a tower. That's the same thing that I've heard. Why is that? Freedom. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's pretty safe. And guys, guys are really good. When we get up there, we, you know, we talk to each other and take a look. And uh, I don't think a towers right now is needed. Maybe if they lengthen the runway and we get a lot more jet, jet activity, it might be needed. But right now, I'm not sure that the guys would go for it and girls. Yeah, I'd agree with uh, Steve. And uh, I think if we had... Um, you know, more commercial traffic and, uh, you know, maybe some bigger airplanes coming in, which that is the case uh, up in Northern Colorado uh, at the regional up there, that, uh, that it might be uh, appropriate. But uh, I think for our operations, um, I, think, I think things are, are going well. And uh, I, you know, don't know, uh, don't think that a, a tower would uh, necessarily enhance things for operations. Um, uh, just probably not necessary for the uh, kind of operations that we have. 
Uh, just one more thought, uh, statistically speaking on that. Um, the, a lot of the people from Rocky Mountain Metro, um, Fort Collins, occasionally Centennial, but not that often. Um, and then sometimes Boulder, but, but specifically Rocky Mountain in, in Northern Colorado, they have people that leave that environment to come to a non-towered airport for flight training and touch and goes and things like that to get out of the controlled environment. Um, I suspect if you put them back in that same environment, you would lose a percentage of those flight operations based on that. Um, I don't think you'd lose, lose all of them, but I would say that there is a decent percentage of our total operations that are from other airports as well. So in doing so, you might knock that, uh, knock that total operations number down, back down below that, that uh, criteria that the FAA looks at for a towered airport. And I think that's one of the other considerations. Hmm. Right. Yeah, I appreciate all those points. And uh, I think you're right, uh, Mick, that the commercial service is the main reason Fort Collins is kind of angling for that to get Allegiant back in there. But I was just surprised that the total numbers were so close. I do think, Russell, it'd be a really interesting one for us to keep in the back of our head at runway extension conversations come up. You know, yeah. As the traffic mix changes, how we should be thinking about that, because that's certainly a change um, to the operations and you know something that we, we absolutely should make sure we're all well aware of implications one way or the other. Any other comments? Um, I had a question. First of all, congratulations, Russ, on the airplane. And then um, the ATC up there is so friendly. I, I love flying up there because they're happy and they're, um, you actually are almost having a dialogue with them. Um, they're seeking information from us. It's just a, it's a fun environment to fly into right now won't stay that way forever. I'm sure it'll get more business-like. The question I had was um, for the seats that were coming up and expiring this month, have the have they been renewed? Or do we have the same board going into 2021 or is that finalized? I know the interviews may just be like this weekend. Can you, you tell us? You kind of beat me to the punch, Melinda. Ah, there we go. I was actually going to uh, tell Mick, who has opted not to reapply, Oh. Um, thank you very much for your service, and um, I'm sure it's bittersweet, but uh, we, we do appreciate everything you've done and being a part of the airport board, and, uh, you know, wish you the, all the best and, and going forward. When did you turn them turn up? Say again? I, this is my last meeting. Oh, so really? I, yeah, Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I've uh, been on the board for three and a half years. It's uh, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been great working with all of you. Um, my wife and I uh, have plans to be traveling more to visit uh, family more in 2021, and uh, just not sure where I'm going to be at any particular time as far as trying to line up a schedule with uh, board meetings or whatever. So, but um, it's, uh, it's been really nice, really nice working with all of you. And um, hopefully, you know, now that uh, uh, you're having meetings again, uh, 2021 can be a, a better year, a more productive year for the board. And uh, you guys can uh, really get on a roll and I'm sure uh, that I'm gonna be keeping tabs on you too. So, uh, so I'll uh, certainly be seeing you around. Congratulations. And I'll let Michelle Gomez speak to filling those seats, that seat. So we did board interviews on the 15th this last Saturday. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the 5th this last Saturday. And um, the board appointments will be on the 15th. So we will know new board members on the 16th. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then they'll start January 1st. Okay. So is there just one opening? Is that all? Two. There's two openings. Oh, two. Russell's Russell's position was also um, up, but he's reapplied. Oh, okay. 
and yeah. not guaranteed that he will be coming back. That's a council. <laughs> They might but, this might be my last meeting too. They might kick me out. Fingers crossed, Russ. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. I'll he talk to him He's my neighbor. <laughs> well, Mick, thank you for the last several years. I, I know, you know, when I first joined the board, you you helped show me the ropes and helped me get familiar with stuff. So I really appreciate it and we'll miss seeing you on these meetings. But I, I am sure you'll come still join us and uh, public invited to be heard is always open. So we look forward to still hearing from you. Thank you, Harrison. And Russell, I hope we're seeing you in January as well. Oh, thank you. Any other comments from anybody on the board? I'll make one quick note just uh, for everyone's knowledge. Um, I actually changed jobs in April and I'm now working for a consulting firm that does airport engineering, planning, um, I'm working on the air service development side, that's commercial aviation service. Um, so my particular role certainly won't overlap with anything at the Longmont Airport, though my firm potentially could in the future. I am one of two employees in Colorado. We've done almost no business in Colorado related to planning or engineering. Um, but if that, you know, as those topics come up, I will certainly recuse myself and, you know, make, make that conflict known, but just want everyone to be aware of that. I'm going forward and I have discussed it with David before as well, but just congratulations. Make Thank you. Yeah, way to go. Um, um, can I, can I ask one question of David? If he's still around, he's still I'm here. Well, I have a, a lot of the paperwork that I got when I started, I read somewhere there in the paperwork that there's 22,000 people who come to, to Longmont through the airport. I was just wondering, how do you get that 22,000 people on average? Uh, study, a study was done by CDOT um, in their economic, uh, economic impact study. And those numbers came from their economic impact study. I think the when we put that out, it was from the 2013 study. Um, we haven't updated that from the, from the study they did in 2018 and released in 2020. So what do they do? They stand out there and count them all year round? No, I think they talk with the people that um, fly into here. Um, the names of companies that uh, we've provided that we've seen come through here, um, and they reached out to different people. And I'm not sure how they made that analysis, but we took hmm. our numbers from their numbers. Huh. Um, okay. I've flown into other airports during the last survey and they had a, um, a little brochure that you picked up and then where you went online to complete uh, what you did, you know, where you came from, how long your flight was, how much did you buy fuel, did you use services, how many souls, all those questions. And I completed probably three or four of those um, in that survey year, which I think was 2018. That's, that's very interesting. I've been to over a hundred airports just like Vance Brand. Never seen anything like that. Uh, you know? Yeah, it was in, um, I want to say probably Sterling, maybe the Sterling wow. Airport, and huh. um, in the FBO. So, yeah, I got to go inside the FBO, and they had a, okay. uh, the CDOT stuff on the counter, probably right next to the crew car keys. So, that's so the, really, the number may be a lot bigger because at that, those, those numbers come only from people who filled out the survey. Right. So, a lot of people aren't so. going to do it. Yeah, correct. You fly in with four people, mm -hmm. and you know the pilot writes down he was he came and he parked, stayed overnight, but he didn't mention the four people he brought in. So those numbers may be really way off, I think. Yeah, and they did ask for that number, and then their focus was out of the state. Um, that was really what they were interested in was how yeah. many people were coming from outside the state yeah. coming in. Yeah. So while my information was interesting, they were more interested in uh, out-of-state visits. Okay, I was just interested. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Councilmember Peck, do you have any comments? Actually, I have about three things if the board can uh, grant me the time to uh, ask. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want your advice. Um, the Rocky Mountain, and I don't know what the third, the second M stands for, but the airport noise group asked me to be part of their group and attend their meetings. Would that help? Would that help this airport to have that knowledge to know what's going on? 
uh, I don't want to do anything and I don't want to take this to ask my fellow counselors if this advisory group thinks that it would not be a good idea for me to uh, join those meetings. I don't, I don't have any feelings toward it one way or the other, but if you think it would, it would help to garner knowledge as to what's going on, uh, basically on the ground level, what's being said, where they're going, then I would join and bring that information back to you. But if you think it would just be a waste of time, I certainly don't want to waste my time. Are you going to be a spy? Is that what you're going to be? <laughs> don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so think about it. You don't have to yeah. let me know. But um, if you have any thoughts, I would appreciate it. I'm all for an ambassador. I think that's a good idea, but I think they're beating a horse that's been settled. I mean, it's been back and forth to court so many times. I don't think there's anything new going to come out of it. And we've heard they do come to the meetings and tell us you know, what their um, objective is. Okay. And um, I think we hear from them that way, but they kind of keep bringing up the noise, but it's been measured. We're not out of line. It's, there's really nothing else to be you know, to be done other than just courtesy of pilots, which we do. So I'd say it might end up being um, misuse of time. But of course, I'm always interested in hearing what what's going on as well. So I, I, I'd say I'd vote 70-30 that you, you, uh, <laughs> you skip at 70. But if you've got enough support, attend. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for that input. It's really what I wanted. Um, so I'll take that as my answer. Um, the other thing is that for David, I noticed in the financial report, and this is just for my knowledge, that the EE insurance was at a deficit. Can you tell me what the EE insurance is? Uh, I think that's the Equal Opportunity Employment Insurance. Um, I would have to, to be 100% sure, I would have to ask somebody in accounting Okay, I would like to know this because it was a thousand dollars or less in the deficit, and I don't know what that means. So yeah, and that's one of those things that they set up as to what it's going to cost. Um, but I think what they haven't had a handle on is whatever time Michelle spends on the board. I'm paying for her time, but I also have to pay for a portion or a percentage of the benefits for the time that she's putting in. Oh, okay. And I think that instead of it just being for me, a portion of that, the reason it's going over is a very small portion of that is going for what it would cost having, what it cost having Michelle spend time on the board and the minutes and the things that she does for us. Okay, that's a perfect answer. I don't need to know anything else about okay. it. I was just curious. And the last thing is, do you have any new information on the Part 16 through FAA that is uh, pending or? So they gave them a, a, themselves an extension again. Um, and I suspect they'll do it another time since they're, I think, past their deadline once again right. um, of their extension. They'll probably give themselves another extension Sometimes that's a sign that they're about to render a decision, but other times it just means that they're too busy to even write the extension. <laughs> and I'm gonna say that's, that. that's information that I got from, from our aviation, outside aviation council. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thanks everybody. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Slater, did you have any other comments? I believe I uh, made mine, so. I don't think I have any more. All right. We've made it through the agenda. Um, so without any further comments, it's been really nice to see everybody and hope everyone has a lovely rest of the year. Nice holiday season and a happy new year. Um, see you all in January. I'll adjourn the meeting for uh, December. Thank you. Good Thank to you. see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Okay.